Paul McGuire Grimes, ABC Minneapolis. Andrew, it is so great talking to you. I love The Fugitive, so I'm so glad to get to talk to you about it today. So thank you for the time, and congrats to 30 years. Thank you. Yeah, and I want to start with the big scene, the I didn't kill my wife, I don't care, leading into the fall, which has just become iconic for the movie. Did you know shooting it, that was going to be like such a pivotal scene? And did you then execute it any differently than some of the other chases in the film? Well, you know, there, there's been a lot of discussion about what dialogue was on the page and who made up what and, you know, what Tommy wrote and what, what, what Walter Hill wrote years before the movie was going on. So... I just remember I was busy working with lighting and staging and the water and everything like that. And we all decided we didn't want to have pages of dialogue back and forth between Tommy and Harris. We want to keep it simple. Yeah. You know, you know, I didn't kill my wife. You know, they say, well, let's discuss it. No, we're going to do that. He says, I don't care. My job is just to bring you in. I'm not to, to determine whether you're guilty or not. You're, you're, you're a fugitive. Right. So um, that was it. You know, it, it, and we designed the sets, you know, we designed the sets uh, we built him in a warehouse in Chicago and, and had the lighting and the water dripping and all that. So it was a very, it was a very confined area and it gave it a lot of texture and, uh, and danger to what we were doing. I, I mean, it's, it's just the way you should like the angle on him and the angle on Harrison and then just him fall. It, it's, it's a perfect, it's a perfect scene. Uh, Harrison Ford is such perfect casting to his Dr. Richard Kimball because he's got the charm and you don't want to believe that he did it, but then you specifically shoot it in the beginning to not show the one armed man. So I'm curious, were there conversations with Harrison to kind of play a specific angle of like, could he have done it or not? Like what were those conversations with Harrison building that character? We wanted we wanted everybody to know that he was innocent mm -hmm. you know, because right. the, the empathy when he breaks down in the police station, you know, and they accuse him, you, you know, you, you want to know that the guy's getting screwed. You know, it's anyway, when, when I showed the movie to Harrison for the first time, we were sitting in the back of the theater at Warner Brothers and all the suits were there and the executives. And and this is before Tommy gets on and Harrison. Uh, he watches the scene where he he breaks down and he and, you know and he and he leaned over to me and he gave me a kiss, and the reason was because he realized you would have such empathy for who he was, you know you would really care about this character no matter whatever happened with Gerard and Tommy you were you were you were embedded in who he was and his struggle, mm -hmm. and that's what the movie's about you know and then Tommy is a bulldog he's a force of nature he's he's not giving up, and Harrison's not giving up either. You know, so so the, these two these two guys fighting for innocence and for capture, and and you know it's very touching at the end of the movie when he when he realizes this guy is innocent and he and he's been unjustly accused, and Tommy's going to make sure he gets out of there safely. Right. It's it. They're fantastic together and how these two characters are built and going off of each other. And I think that this movie really just stands the test of time. And I'll always watch it if it's on cable. I'll just sit down and like keep watching. And I'm curious. And I think that action films and just the genre and audiences have changed so much since 1993. How do you think that this film bucks all those trends? Well, the 4K Blu-ray is a different movie. It, I mean, it looks better and sounds better than it ever has. Mm. And it actually is, if you get that new equipment and watch it on a big screen television, it's, it's, it's better than it'll look in any theater. So I recommend to people, you know, open your wallets and get the 4K and buy the Blu-ray player because other, other films are going to come out like that. And, you know, we remastered it, both sound and picture. And so I think it's, it's you know, it's really worthwhile trying to see it because there's detail now and texture that you never saw before. I love watching movies like this to see all the little details that you you think you've seen all these years, but then you don't until you watch again. Take me back to the morning that The Fugitive was nominated for Best Picture, and then going into Tommy Lee Jones winning Best Supporting Actor. What went through your mind? Was it a pinch me moment? Was it surreal? Well, it was it was it was sort of bittersweet because um, uh, uh, we got nominated for Best Picture, and. Uh, uh, and Harrison did get, didn't get nominated for Best Actor, and I didn't get nominated for Best Director, which has happened a lot. It happened to Spielberg. It happened to Kubrick. It happened to Rob Reiner. You know, how can a film be nominated for Best Picture and the director not nominated? Anyway, so we were disappointed with that. But the fact that it was nominated for Best Picture in seven other categories, and Tommy was, you know, Tommy just swept the town. You know, he he, he was so incredible in the movie. And, and, and everybody said, well, an action movie never gets nominated for Best Picture, you know. 
So that was very heartening. And, uh, you know, it's, it's held up. People, people still feel that. Oh, apps. It's a fantastic watch. I popped in the other day and just loved it all over again. I got the wrap. Andrew, it was great talking to you. Thank you for the time today. And thank you for such a fantastic film. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.